The Flush, presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Pheasants Forever. The dawn of a January day on the Kansas Plains. We are bird hunters on a mission, a mission to scratch an itch for late season pheasant hunting. By early January, most states have closed pheasant seasons, but not here. All right, here's the scene. It's early January. We are in a place called Downs, Kansas. Downs population 1,100. And Kansas pheasant season continues until, get this, January 31st. And look out there. Kansas could be somebody's pool table. It is so flat right here. This is Kansas. Mostly treeless, far as the eye can see, horizons of grasslands. Kansas, in my estimation, is the sleeper state for pheasants. We'll find out who's really sleeping. Chasing late season ringnecks usually means no crowds. You've got the back roads and pheasant haunts all to yourself. Just you and the hunting buddies. Get together here and we'll uh... See what happens. That'd be three of us, two with the same first name, Scott. Scott Carlson, a Kansas native, and two Minnesotans, Scott Franson and me. My name's Ron. Here's Ron's law. Plenty of birds for everybody. I'll shoot first. Oh, yes, one more thing. We are being led to Kansas ringneck haunts by host and guide Eric Verbus. Eric owns Outdoor Obsessions, a quaint hunting camp in Towns, Kansas. <laughs> Any present you get is actually one I got. <laughs> Eric instantly fit our group like a glove and quickly joined the fun. You guys have hunted with him before? Uh, and you're gonna do it again? <laughs> got a little waterfowl in you, a little duck? <laughs> duck, little duck. Shoot, Scott! <laughs> Nice to have you back. <laughs> You're the last time. <laughs> the rib fest and teasing over, well, at least for a while. We were anxious to start hunting for a January thaw of flying ringnecks. Well, yeah, let's work this valley out here, guys. Let's just work through it nice and easy. I'll kind of go back and forth. Go up. Shot. Yeah, he's going down. Come on, buddy. Rooster. I wanted to let Scott, my buddy, uh, get that bird, and he did. Nice shot, Scott. Thanks, Ron. It's a beautiful bird. Beautiful bird, guys. Let's see if Ron can get on the board here. Scott, do you want to just wait in the truck? While our bird brains were thinking rooster, a feathered surprise erupted, quail. <laughs> What's a friend for if you don't offer a little grief about his shooting? <laughs> I knew my turn would come. The back and forth is, you almost remember that as much as you do some of the great retrieves and the good shots. Those quail, uh, especially in that habitat, makes it extremely uh, challenging to hit. They don't give a guy much of a chance. We trudged on. Kansas is famed for being flat and forever. Hey, I mean, I got one. Nice bird. Can you corner a ring neck on the vast Kansas prairie? Well, sure. But it's not always easy. <laughs> While two other roosters escaped untouched, this ring neck took a different approach. Perch in a tree to be free. It worked. <laughs> We're just there was no shortage of dog power. Thanks. 
let's meet a yellow lab with an expensive name, Money. Money is an eight-year-old female yellow lab. We had good dog work. I mean, the labs and the pointers worked really well together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There was no doubt, the hot shooter of the day so far was Scott Carlson of Carlson Choke Tube fame. Hmm, I'm beginning to think my friend Scott Carlson never misses. But I need to be honest, a few, mm, quite a few, also kept flying. Nevertheless, our first taste of Kansas late season action was impressive. Thanks to Eric's guiding job. And then I hope there's a rooster coming right out. Eric is made to uh, host hunters. He makes you feel welcome as soon as you walk through the door. I think it's a, a great experience at Outdoor Obsessions. I mean, there's a lot of birds. The accommodations are comfortable. When we come back, we'll continue our Kansas adventure with more ringnecks in the air and more time with Outdoor Obsessions in Towns, Kansas. You're watching The Flush. The Flush, brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition. Every shot counts. Benelli. Polaris. Waltons. And by North Dakota Tourism. late season pheasant hunting in Kansas is addictive? Well, here's why. It also explains why in January we're hanging out in Towns, Kansas, headquarters for Outdoor Obsessions Hunting and Fishing Lodge, owned by Eric Burbus. And hunting and fishing has been a passion forever. Eric and his wife Tracy offer a comfortable lodge for their hunting guests, a lodge with a unique history. Yeah, it used to be a, a assisted living center. Bought it converted it, didn't have to do really any you know, structural changes, and we were right into our hunting operation. Yeah, there's 22 beds. We've got eight different rooms, so we do all the meals and everything like that for the guests. Towns, Kansas, population roughly 1,100, is a quiet place with a famous attraction a few miles away in nearby Gawker City, Kansas. Hug it. <laughs> yeah, it's a big ball of twine. The largest ball of twine. Hey, it is big. It wasn't worth it. We had to wait for people to leave. There were so many, there was no parking. Taking no twine before it's time, we also knew Kansas ringnecks weren't tied down. So it was back to the wide open spaces. Hunting guide Eric had a plan. Well, boys, we got the uh, a big CRP field. You see, it goes for a long ways. So we're just going to start dissecting piece by piece and working it to see what we can find. I think she's ready to hunt. I, I think they're all ready to hunt. Look at them. Everybody okay. loaded? Let's just push it off that way. Keep, keep your head up. Rooster! Nice shot. First one down. <laughs> That's what they look like, Ron. Rooster! Good girl, Ez. Good girl. All over that one. Good girl. Hmm. Looks like the two Scots have the hot shotgun in hand so far. Rooster! Rooster! Nice shot, Scott! Third one of the day, boys. Did you shoot, Ron? You got the blank shells, right? Oh, I see. My hunting partners are getting lippy. Did you say that? Just got a tip of his wing there. <laughs> no sympathy here. Rooster! Oh, nice shot. We just walk it out to the end here. When you get into ringnecks, there's always a reason. Right, she's got, there it goes. It's called habitat. Watch where they go. Like the holy go. cow, look at them all go. go. Oh, dang it. Here, oh, there goes one there, there goes one there. All right, watch where they go. Rooster, right here. Nice right, shot, head shot, dead, dead. Next, hunting partner Scott Franson walked into another one of those unexpected moments. 
Yeah, I got a point. Whoa! Oh. Holy smokes, I was not ready for that. She just, po she just pointed uh, that whole cubby. Suddenly, we were into flying missiles. Bob White quail. That's a different, no, nope, I'm behind you. Whoa! A lot of coil there. That's like yeah, three, three different coveys. That's unreal. That is so cool. Scott, my Minnesota sidekick, was also harboring a little secret. He'd never killed a wild quail before, despite a few chances. Here it goes. Watch out, Rod. Another one. Another one. But then his luck changed. Quail. Nice shot. <laughs> You're supposed to look at the color of the head. You know. Well, it's hard to do that when both eyes are shut. <laughs> Yay! Finally, as they say, the monkey is off his back. Well, that's fun. That's a bonus. Meanwhile, the other Scott can't seem to miss, so everybody's happy. That's Kansas in January. Lots of ringnecks and plenty of twine. Coming up. We're heading to the northwest corner of Kansas for a different taste of late season ringneck hunting. You're watching The Flush. The Flush, brought to you by Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism. Birchwood Casey. Carlson Choke Tubes. Pure South Dakota. And by Rough Tough Kennels. When faced with a sea of grass strips, endless corn, and then more grass, there's no shortcut to finding ringneck hideouts. Well, this is why they call it hunting. Although, to be honest, most of us would rather be shooting than hunting. So, so far, gun barrel's pretty cold. <laughs> Our hunting ground also was a little different. We were in Northwest Kansas. Hunting companions got Carlson explained. Well, we're hunting uh, in Rollins County, Kansas, and we're hunting some CRP with uh, cut wheat field, uh, trees. Yeah, this is organically farmed, so this is a waterway where it drains out of that other field, so it wouldn't erode the field. Scott Carlson also was convinced this spot held a bunch of birds. There are birds, a lot of birds in here. We got a cornfield over here on this side, which is a good food source for them. And, uh, Brewster! Good shot. Cow. Wow. That little 20 gauge reached out there? Yep. That was a long shot that Scott just made. Scott Franson with a 20 gauge, which tells you if you're on, you can get the bird. Speaking of shooting, Dot, the pointer, goes stiff and... Oh, man. Ah, oh, crap. My bad. Yes, really bad when in the company of one of America's shotgun experts, the founder of Carlson Choke Tubes. You know, a lot of people won't pattern their shotguns, take them out before they go hunting. They take their deer rifle out and they sight it in every year, but they won't sight in their shotgun. And you should teach you two things. is one where the point of aim of the gun is, and then show you what the pattern's like with the choke and with the load. Our chokes are done over on these two machines. At his choke tube plant in Atwood, Kansas, Scott and crew have been making and testing choke tubes for all models of shotguns for more than 25 years, including my Benelli Ethos. Uh, this is uh, Carlson late season. What, That's a late season prairie storm tube is what it is. And it's designed just like out here. You know, it's late season. These birds are getting up out there a ways and this choke will reach out 45, 50 yards if yep. you're on them. If you're on them. That leaves me out. <laughs> <laughs> Convinced there were more ringnecks to roust, we kept pushing the grass strips. Birds need habitat, they need cover. Yeah, it's just nice in any of these fields, you know, when a, a farmer can you know, just leave a little bit for the birds. Not a lot, you know, just a little. At least it's someplace for them to go. 
Let's take this terrace around, we'll bring that one back. Just when we needed a boost in our hunting spirits, Izzy, the yellow lab, did it. Oh, he's gonna run out of steam. He's had it now. That's a heck of a tree. <laughs> Okay, maybe this organic farming idea holds lots of future promise for pheasant hunters. Tell me again what's happening here on this field. Tell me about yeah, that. Yeah, it's been organically farmed, so it's never been sprayed. There's no spray been used. Well, the advantage is if you're a bird hunter and you like habitat and cover, I mean, you can see here that the number of birds that we're seeing, we'll see more birds over here when we get these terrace tops that are CRP too. Our canine uh, companions also were telling us something. Birds were running ahead. The girl dot, get him, get him. We all agree, without a hunting dog ahead, we'd probably be couch potatoes instead of wing shooters. Time to meet Legend the Pointer. Legend is a five-year-old male, German short hair pointer. Okay, my dead-eye companions, time to take a break. Now we gotta do that two more times. That's right. Yeah. We get 12 birds, three of us, so. Well, I've got my four. I see that. Does that mean you're not walking anymore? I'll just, I'll just run and point. There's one. Run. There's one. When we return, one more memorable walk in the wide open spaces of Northwest Kansas, and sadly, We'll be taking our last pheasant hunt of the season. You're watching The Flush. Great hunting stories begin with great habitat. Join Pheasants Forever today to help us create more upland habitat for the birds. Sign up at this special web address below and you'll receive a one-year subscription to Pheasants Forever Journal. Plus, this Pheasants Forever Edition Browning Double Blade Knife with the Collector's Tin. Sign up today to help us create healthy habitat and abundant wildlife. This piece of Kansas prairie in the state's arid northwest is unique for more than yucca plants and ringneck haunts. I'll go in the middle, you can get on the left side, and you on the right. Our host, Scott Carlson, is enrolled in an organic farming program that means no chemicals, and each field must have buffer strips to improve water quality. We discovered those strips of grass also improve the pheasant count. My companion, Scott Carlson, also had the hot eye again. This time on, well, my bird. I'm sorry. Oh, I get it. When a ring neck flushes, it's everybody for themselves. Well, I can play that game. Good dot, good girls, get them, get them, Raven. You can almost see the smile on her face. Whoops, whoops. Good shot! Game hog! Game hog? Well, if the shoe fits, you wear it. That was cool. Yeah, that's the payout, man. That was out there. Oh, that was a long shot. I think Ron needs to hunt over there. <laughs> Look, Raven's got one, I got one. How about that? Uh, once in a while, it's kind of fun being a game hog. You guys know all about that. I knew you'd catch on. <laughs> It's fun getting BS from hunting buddies, you know? Of course, I give it back <laughs> once in a while. Otherwise, I'm a pretty nice guy. I'm a nice guy until the next bird erupts. Sister! Game hog. Good girl. Point, shoot, retrieve. <laughs> oh, pretty good, yeah, but that was pretty. Raven's on point, you know. Labs aren't known for pointing, but she will. Wasn't a fancy point, but it's a point. She went in and this guy came out, and now he's in the hand. That's what you call the perfect pheasant hunt right there. Whoa. 
Need the dog help there. Next, Scott and Scott, together, went into hunt mode. No. Do it. Good shot. You too, good shot. Kind of tag team them. I got him once, Scott got him once. Maybe that's the perfect ending to a perfect January day on the Kansas Prairie. All right, so not a bad haul, guys, huh? No. And the last bird is taken by the tag team of Scott and Scott. And that way, nobody misses. I didn't really have any expectations. I had more excitement. And hunting a new state. I've never been to Kansas. Um, wanted to see what it was like. And it was fantastic. Fantastic.